In today's advanced video tutorial, we'll discuss how you can set up and manage instrument routing in Contact. We'll go over insert and send effects, instruments, and groups, as well as a new bus system introduced in Contact 5. And never miss a tutorial by subscribing to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ADSRtoots. At the instrument level of an instrument, you can control the bus insert effects, instrument insert effects, instrument send effects, and instrument output. Let's talk about bus insert effects. Bus insert effects functions exactly the same way as group insert effects, except the effect modules can't be set to post amp. Also, the outputs of the groups you have routed to any bus are summed and processed together, so all effects operate in a monophonic fashion without the ability to distinguish between voices. You can select the bus you wish to edit by clicking on the output level meter at the top of the section or by selecting it from the drop down menu below the edit all buses button. If you want to edit all buses at once, activate the edit all buses button. While this button is active, any changes you make on the bus level will affect all buses at once. So if I set this to negative six, this will make all buses set to negative six. The instrument bus level has an amplifier section with volume, pan, and output controls. This section functions functions exactly the same way as the group level, except you have an extra option to route the output through the instrument output, but bypass the instrument effects chain. So when it's set to default, the bus will flow, the audio will flow through the instrument top down in a traditional fashion. So it'll go from the group to the bus to any insert effects and then out to the outputs. If you choose a direct output, what will happen is it'll flow through the group, through the bus, and it will um, go directly to the output section. Now, what I just mentioned, the program out, what this will do is this will go in the same way, but what will happen is it will bypass this entire section. And we'll talk about reasons and why you would want to do that um, shortly. So just know the difference between the default and program out and stereo is default will follow the normal path all the way through, through the instrument, which ends out in, in instrument insert effects. Uh, program out will follow the same path, except it will bypass the insert effects and it'll make use of, of the output you specify here. And then your third option is directly to a channel. And when you do that, it bypasses um, the in instrument as well. Okay. All right, let's take a look at using the instru instrument bus in a real world scenario. Okay, I'm going to load up some sounds. Let me find something new today. Channel Robot Percussion Factory. I don't know where the audio is. There we go. Samples. Okay, I'm just going to take some random stuff here. All right. Going to load in some sounds here. Just pretend they're, they're drums. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move all of this to their own group. So I'm going to use move each meet each zone to its own group clone. So now they're in their own group. Before I do that, I'm going to turn on select zone by MIDI. I'm going to go back to the group editor and I'm going to turn select by MIDI on as well. Okay. So in this example, this fictitious example, um, Say you have a drum kit with several samples with different mic placements. So you have your kick inside, your kick outside, your snare top, your snare bottom, and these samples are placed in their corresponding group. 
So each group will have its own group insert effects chain. Um, but you can also route the kicks to a bus to be processed by the same insert effects chain. So you have um, at the group level um, each sound having its own effects, right? And then since you have a similar sound, so you have uh, the mics for, you have two mics for the kicks, um, you want to, at some point, you want to process them together. So maybe you want to add a little, um, maybe reverb or the same EQ to that. So what you can do is you can have individual settings for each sound and then route both kicks to the same bus and then put the same effect on there so they can both be processed um, um, with the same effect. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I don't need this many groups as well either so I might delete some. So I'm going to call this one kick inside kick outside let's call this snare top snare bottom and I'm going to uh, delete this group Oops. Let me just delete these groups. So for this example, I don't need this many groups. All right. Make sure these still have sound on them. Okay. All right. So I don't need the group editor anymore. Actually, let me. Uh, okay, just so I can see the groups, I, I turn on a monitor group so I can see which, which group I'm on. Okay, so this is kick inside. All right, I'm gonna put uh, some effects on here. Let's put a little. Um, Saturation. Let's put a filter on here. Actually, I don't want to put on here. Okay, doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter what you put here. Just uh, whatever. Let's put the little compressor on here. Okay, so kick inside has that. Let's put a twang here on the snare. Let's put a three band EQ on the top. Let's add a um, high pass filter. Okay, so right now all of the groups have a different setup for the group insert effects okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to route the, both the kicks to the same bus so let's route the kick inside to bus 1 and kick outside to bus 1 okay so now bus 1 has the kicks Okay, and then do the snares to bus two. Okay, so now we have bus one and bus two. Now that I have my kicks routed to a bus, I can process both sounds at the same time using um, the bus by putting the filters or effects that I want on it. So let's put a ladder on here. Two in a row just just because we can do it. Okay and then on bus two I am going to put let's use a preset. 
24 band EQ, why not? Okay, so now the snares, even though on their on their group insert effects have different effects, when they get summed together in the instrument bus, they are processed together um, by the same effect. Okay, so that's an example of what we can do with the buses. Alright, now let's look at the instrument insert effects. So the instrument insert effects operates on the summed output signal of all the groups and buses unless you route them directly to an output channel. So just remember the routing we talked about earlier. It works exactly as the bus insert effects chain with the exception that it doesn't have an amplifier section. So if you want to control the amplifier, um, you have to do it in the instrument header. So if you want to control the volume of um, the instrument at this point, you would have to adjust the volume um, here. Okay. And just like the bus insert effects chain, all the effects operate in a monophonic fashion without the ability to distinguish between voices. So when this once it gets when, once the, the sound gets to this level, um, there's no notion of voices. Okay, so the sound is mucked together. Well, I'm actually, I'm sorry here. Let me, let me minimize this. So when the sound gets to this level, um, all the sound is mucked together. So the voices, you know, there's no notion of voice count. It's just all um, mucked together. Okay, so in contrast, um, the send effects, um, they work in parallel and they only receive signals that you explicitly send there via the send levels module. And like the instrument insert effects chain, all effects operate in a monophonic fashion without the ability to distinguish between voices. So to use a module as a send effect, add it to one of your instrument send effect slots. Okay, so let's throw a reverb in here. Okay, so now you need to tap a source signal to be sent there by adding a send levels module to either the group, the bus, or the instrument effects chain. Okay, so this, you know, by when you create a new instrument, this already has a sends level here. But if I wanted to add a new one, I could add one here, for instance. So what this will do is at the group level, we'll send this sound to the reverb. Okay, so now you use a knob here to adjust the send level. To control the return, use the return knob in the return module. Okay, so this is how you control the return. And this is how you control the send. So typically here you would just kind of um, tune it in to, until you get the sound that you like. Another thing that you can do which is pretty slick is you can also change the output assignment of the instrument send effects module. What this does is it allows you to isolate wet effects signals from your instrument's output channel. Okay, so what I can do here is I can send the sound from the reverb to an aux channel, right? So in my DAW, I can have my sound in serial one, and I can have just the reverb from that sound come off and come out in aux one, and I can manipulate it in my DAW. So I can mix it, I can add additional effects to it. Um, this is pretty flexible. You can do a lot of things um, with this routing. But I think for most people, um, the standard routing will suffice. Um, typically, when most people use uses um, when most people use send effects, they um, they run the the, ret the return back into their their sound and then they record it as is. But if you'd like to keep it separate, so that you can mix it down later, or maybe you you're you send it you're sending it in for mastering, and you know you want to be able to control the levels there. Um, this is how you separate that sound. Okay, and here's a quick tip. Um, save an, an empty effects chain as a preset so that you can quickly clear out the chain without having to remove the modules one by one. 
So normally I would have to do this to clear this. Um, and I, or I can just do reset. There you go. Okay, and now we look at the instrument output. So since the instrument level does not have an amplifier section, the output of the instrument is controlled in the output channel, which is in the instrument header. All right, so this is how you control the output channel of the instrument. The output channel displays the currently selected output channel that will receive the output signal from this instrument. Clicking on the channel name will open up a drop down menu with all of your currently defined output channels. This allows you to assign the instrument to a different channel. Your available channels are determined by your audio inter interface when you're using contact standalone or by your host software. Okay, so I'm using contact standalone, so I'm only limited, to, limited by my audio interface, which is the built in audio on the Mac. Okay. So as you can see, the routing in contact is extremely flexible and powerful. Um, you can do a lot of things, especially with the bus and with the um, send effects routing. So this is part two. This is the end of part two, but we have one more part. Um, in this three-part series that talks about instrument routing. So tune in for part three. And don't forget to check out our website at www.contacttutorials.com for more contact tutorials and sounds. ADSR contact tutorials supercharge your contact skills. This is DJ Nice signing off. Until next time, I go make some music.